Okay, the latest 30 minute game. Playing as white. Trying to get rid of the obvious moves and overthinking the obvious moves and making obvious moves even less obvious. <laughs> if I said that right. So basically just coming through here, this the opponent was just coming through with the pawns and I thought well let's see if we can sort of come through and attack the centre. Focusing on this weak pawn here at the minute because our bishop doesn't look like it's being challenged. Not sure if I did the move orders correctly but I thought well seeing as they're not actually developing their minor pieces or major pieces let's take this uh, pawn off. And we castled, it's saying that it's a, a bit of a blunder castling. Yeah, you see, we were focused on there, but um, we thought, well, there's nothing to do at this minute in time. The king is airy, not developed all my pieces, and what's that going to do for me? You know, we take, king takes, what we're looking at, where's the knight going? Can, what's the knight going to take, this pawn or something? Ah, interesting. Interesting. I didn't look this far. I, I, I didn't pay any attention to it because my king was airy. But if you have a look at it, the king would be here. And then if the knight did this with the check, if he's got any maybe sense ish, maybe if he takes his king back, and then we would take. If he left it there, we'd get the queen for free. Interesting. Right, yeah, I didn't look any further. I said, get your king to safety. Simple as. Okay, interesting one. Right, okay, so they developed the knight. We developed our bishop, just taking it off the back. So we've got our pieces developed. So I'm feeling fairly comfortable because their bishops are stuck on the back at the moment. But I hadn't really created a target zone for myself. My queen was there, but there's nothing behind my queen. They're developing their bishop now, getting ready to castle. So I move my queen up just to make some space for the rook coming behind it, potentially putting pressure on the knight. But realistically, the bishop supporting the knight and the queen is, and the king is currently. So I thought it's a little bit flimsy. And the castle. I bring the rook across, but realistically, in my heart, I just knew that there was nothing there with this attack. So I felt like I'd wasted tempo actually delivering this manoeuvre. Saying I should have moved the knight to the edge. Again, wasn't thinking anything to do with the knight going to the edge. Knight coming here, maybe coming here to attack the bishop. Potential, okay? But then there is potential for them to just push the pawn down. But I suppose if they did push the pawn, we just jump there anyway. Interesting. Or oh, he could have just put his pawn here and then that circumvents the knight jump in there. But it weakens his king area, I suppose. Yep, yeah, but wasn't thinking like that. Was thinking, I've got an open file here. I want to try and maintain some sort of appearance on the open file. Keeping it simple. They move their queen off of the line so far. Well, it's probably best if I move my queen off the line. If he's going to start mobilising his rooks on this open file. See the tunnel vision I've got? Yeah, the open file. If he gets his rooks on there, I want to be able to marry up and meet his rooks. So that's what I'm doing. So my whole focal point is tunnel vision on this open file. And then they do the um, scud missile down the side, which is in my head, I don't really know what to do move. So I do a I don't know what to do move either. So we're just matching that, just blocking the scud missile off. Don't want to get any further down. Then they bring the bishop here, and I did say to myself, uh, it's a single attack. Am I too worried about that position? I bring the knight and attack the bishop. It's all looking a bit scrappy at the moment, because for me, I'm not focused on anything apart from this um, file. And now my pieces are sort of like just jumping around, doing single pieces of work. So they move their bishop. And I don't think it was a good idea taking the bishop because if I take then his knight sits here, he's chomping up a bit to get these pawns here. So it makes his knight a little bit more powerful in my head anyway. So I brought the knight back. I'm thinking that my knight can come around, come to here, 
and then we're challenging this pawn here with both our knights something like that i'm trying to improve my position on the board and trying to take a focal point away from the heart, the open file and i need something to target i need pieces i need weak areas that i need to be challenging not just sitting waiting for the opponent so they bring the knight down attacking the bishop and um i thought well i've been waiting for that move for a while you know because the bishop was there and I wasn't too panicked about it because at the end of the day I've got two pieces that are protecting it and this is where keeping the tension for me felt okay. A gauge bar is not on our side here but for me I didn't care. Um, I was looking at targeting this pawn here with the knights also giving a good position for attacking the bishop as well twice. So the bishop takes and we take that with the pawn. So even in this state here with the double pawns feeling fairly comfortable and happy because it seems to be uh, making attack areas towards their king subliminally, you know, subconsciously I'm actually starting to make attack pieces to, well, pathways towards their king area, let's say, and this bishop attacking the pawn was feeling more more enticing the more we were going for going through the game if i could get a knight sat across here i would be very willing to actually take this pawn off and go for the exchange down because their bishop is stuck on the back here his rook is stuck on the other side of the board and we have two rooks ready to rock and roll on the half wall from open file here and it would be open once that pawn's taken rook on this open file and our queen is ready to dance so they brought their queen to the other side of the board and it um, looks like it's challenging this pawn but then on second looking um, he's put a two on one here with his knight on the pawn so i thought well that's probably easily circumvented it means i'm taking a rook off of the half open potential half open file but I'm thinking longer term there might be a bit more damage from this position so he actually moves his knight back so I'm feeling a lot better about that position because now we can take with the knight if his knight takes back which it does we can freely take now we do have this position that we were looking at it's looking a bit favorable for us and I did say to myself I'm taking that pawn my position's rubbish, he can take this pawn with his queen if he wants, but it's going to be on the other side of the board. And he went greedy munching for the pawn with the knight. Um, I'd resign myself to the fact that that pawn was going anyway, and if he did take, then his knight is in limbo, basically. Because it's not really attacking anything else. Made sure that my king could move, yeah, so my king could move to the side, to the side here this pawn is blocking his queen's access to this square so that felt fairly comfortable so then we decided to take the pawn and gauge bar is working on our side here um, we didn't lose any um, brownie points so it's saying that they should have taken with the rook because at this point now I'm thinking I don't know how to finish it but maybe potentially I could grab the rook and his king can actually go over and defend the rook because the bishop's blocking the way so we get the rook for free but it's not a finishing position so I'm trying to think how can I make this a finishing position the king moves so now I've got sights of the queen coming here to finish the job off as best possible but there's something blocking the way the bishop comes down but I'm thinking it might be a bit of a flimsy defense because his queen is on the other side of the board he's looking to take our knight off the board with his rook so we move the knight with a check if the bishop takes then our bishop takes his bishop and then we can take his knight and I'm feeling fairly comfortable we've got two rooks and we've got a queen should be fairly favorable for us moves the king wanting to prevent our queen from getting that diagonal so now they bring the rook and I'm thinking the only way I can get rid of this bishop is by actually bringing my bishop here if the bishop takes then we can take with a check on the king 
and it should be fairly plain sailing from that point. So we bring the bishop down and they capture and we capture and then the opponent resigned at this point. So that was a very, to me, it was a very tough game. Looking for the openings, looking to pressure the king area rather than dancing around, you know, the, the open files here. Um, there was a strong focus on going for the king area, going for that weak king and keeping that pressure on the king and looking for the finish you know the end game opening looking for the finish just basically wanted to end the game didn't want to dance around especially on this open file here we wanted to change the game and change the state of play and really focus on going for that king 